Welcome back. Uh, we have Gareth Taylor, the uh, FA Cup winning head coach of Manchester City. We also have the reigning, the newly anointed uh, manager of the month for the FA Women's Super League, Carla Ward. Carla, uh, you need no introduction. Goodness me, it's third or fourth appearance. But the first time we've introduced you as the manager of Birmingham City. Welcome. How are you? Not bad. It's got a quite different ring to it now, hasn't it? So, no, I'm good. I'm good. Enjoying it. So, uh, yeah, all's good this end. Yeah, delighted to see your success. And I'm sure that plenty of people in this part of the world will echo that because you did a, a super job uh, for Sheffield United women. I mean, it's funny how life turns out. You must have been pretty devastated um, to leave Sheffield United. But here you are, a division higher. Yeah, I think, you know, what football's like, it moves on quickly, things change and um, and that's exactly what it was. It was just a, you know, something that happened and, you know, we move on quickly. I think Birmingham obviously got in contact and um, it was a no-brainer. Well, actually, it was a bit of a brainer because I did have a bit of a meltdown about actually do a, do a take the job or not. Um, but then figured it was a win-win um, for me and my development. I thought it was the right move. So... Um, no, it's been good. It's been tough. It's been um, a battle at times, probably daily, I would say. But um, I'm enjoying it and it's certainly certainly developing me, which for me is most important. Yeah. I mean, domestically, a bit of an upheaval. I know you've got a young child. Um, so you, mm. you, you have things to consider about movement. Presumably you've moved down to, to the Midlands, have you? No, no I travel two hours in, two hours back every day. Um, yeah, so it's not a problem. I'm, I'm an early person. Anyway, so yeah, get out of the house, leave by six and usually home for about four or five o'clock. So it's not too bad. Oh, it's not too bad. That's four hours of your day travelling. That could be pretty exhausting. But nonetheless, you've grabbed the opportunity uh, in uh, more ways than one. Obviously, we've got uh, Gareth Taylor here, who, who you know. But uh, let's uh, record the fact for anybody who doesn't know, you actually reached the FA Cup Women's uh, semi-finals didn't you which must have been a, a, a huge thrill for you yeah considering Birmingham knocked me out as a manager at Sheffield United towards the end of last season uh, and in the next round I'm, I'm obviously in charge and was was quite a bit of a funny situation but no it's um you know it was it was a good occasion I think the quarter final was probably the one that we enjoyed most um and and I'm probably a step too far meeting Everton in the in the semi-finals but look the girls um, they give everything and, and I can't fault them, to be fair. It's interesting, isn't it, that uh, at Birmingham City, the um, women's team is at a higher level than the men's, which, of course, is in the in the championship. You're kind of trend-setting there, if you like. Yeah, try telling that, though, to the, <laughs> to, to the football club. No, the, uh, the men obviously naturally want to get back to the Premier League and, um, you know, that's their vision, that's their aim. So you'd like to think one day that they can sort of claw the way back to, to when they were there. So, um, yeah, you know, we're, we're here, we want to stay here. And for me, like I've made quite clear, it's um, the job is to try and stay in the division and, and make us as sustainable as possible in the division. We'll just bring Gareth in there for a moment. What about the job that uh, that Carla is doing? You'll have noted that as well how, how well she did at, uh, at Sheffield United. Yeah, of course. Yeah, congratulations, Carla. We got cut off before when I was about to, to say congratulations <laughs> on the manager, manager of the month. Really deserved. Um, yeah, I mean, I was in contact with Carla when she was at Sheffield and um, we actually arranged a game pre-season and uh, I missed out on meeting her because she'd already obviously just left to go to, to Birmingham. But yeah, you know, her reputation is, is, uh, is high in the game and she got uh, just rewards by, as she says, continuing her, her development and her journey and, and moving into a club in, uh, in the top flight in the WSL. And um, yeah, I mean, it's all, a lot of these things were really new to me when I came into the job. I was a little bit out of my comfort zone, if I'm honest. Um, but I actually enjoyed our interaction that my, myself and, and Carla had. You know, usually it was talking about players. Usually it was talking about both of us trying to improve our squads or help players. And, you know, I'm sure those those conversations will continue. Uh, just out of interest, Carla, what is it that um, the Women's Manager of the Month receives? Are, are we talking champagne, just as in the men's <laughs> game? No, no, no. It's, uh, it's a block of wood, actually, funnily enough. It's, uh, a nice look. Wood, but um, yeah, it's a block of wood with a little bit of. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm telling you that I haven't actually got it yet. But um, <laughs> after a block of wood, I had a replica 
but um, yeah, I'll let I'll let you know. Uh, I'll send you a picture once we actually do receive it. Right. Okay. Block of wood. You can't drink that. At least as far as I'm aware, you can't drink it. But anyway, uh, you should put a word in and get and get get them to come parallel in that respect. Talking of which, the table. Uh, you're not far apart in the table. Manchester City fifth. Uh, when I looked, uh, Birmingham City seventh. I mean, there is a five point gap, but there's uh, quite a lot of rivalry. Where do you respectively see your seasons going from here, Carla first? Honestly, I know it sounds daft when we're sitting seventh, but we've got to survive in the division and we have a points target that we want to reach as early as possible to, to, to ensure safety. And, you know, myself and, and Gareth will be at the other end of the, the spectrum. Um, we are literally looking to survive and that is without brushing it up, buttering it up, making it look pretty. That's the reality. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's good to hear that sort of real talk, actually, really, and that you're permitted to do it because... Sometimes it seems to me that uh, unrealistic expectations are talked up by clubs. And Gareth, we did chat about that, didn't we, in part one, relative to Sheffield United's men's team at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, sometimes, you know, your success can, can breed other things. And um, yeah, I think it's just about kind of gaining a perspective on it. Like Carla said, ours is, is slightly different. You know, we have uh, a really good squad. We've been used to being in and around it. Um, one thing that I did speak about when, you know, the six years previous, we'd, we'd only won one WSL title uh, as a club. We won six trophies, but only one of those was the league title. Um, I always find that the league title is the one where you can really judge the test of a team, you know, uh, the consistency of a team. I think this season, uh, it seems to have coincided with me starting in this role, but it seems that the competition is is really high. I think previously... It's usually been ourselves, Chelsea and Arsenal. We've been in and around that top three, but I think there's a lot of other teams that are breaking into it a little bit this season. Um, so I believe we've had it already where teams have taken a couple of points off of us. Um, and I think that will continue to happen because the levels are really improving. Yeah, I, I dare say without being brutal about it, you'll be expected to be higher than you are in the table and expecting to be high, higher yourself as well, won't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, going back to what I said before, though, about performances is that, you know, we, we really look at the performance. We have some key, uh, some KPIs that we look at and targets in terms of we're hitting. And obviously there's, there's ones that we aren't hitting, which is uh, obvious. And there's reasons why we're not where we want to be in the league. Um, but we've got a good opportunity. And I think there's, there's, although the season doesn't feel that long, I think we're almost a quarter of the season into it already you only play 22 games. We play Man United who are top on 16 points on uh, Saturday. If we beat them, we can go within two points of them. So I think it's just about focusing on the next game, making sure we stay in amongst it because I think there will be a lot of to and fro as the season goes on. Oh, the big Manchester derby just makes it all the more of a shame, doesn't it, that there are no crowds in, in the grounds at the moment. Isn't that awful? Carla, I know you've got to go to a meeting very shortly, but just that final thought with you, you know, you've enjoyed that great cup run, your league form's great, manager of the month. Is it? Does it feel a bit hollow at times? Um, management's lonely, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but um, no, look, I'm enjoying myself, like I said. Um, I enjoy every day that I'm here. They're a great group. I've got a good bunch of staff. So, And um, as you know, when I took over at Chef, it was a similar story. So you want to... It's, um, for me, from a completely selfish point of view, it's... Um, it's what I need to, to go to the next level and what I need to continue in my own personal development. Carla, many thanks for, for, for your time. I know you've got a busy schedule down there uh, at uh, Birmingham City. Great to have you on the show. Link up again in the future. Congratulations again. Uh, Gareth, going back well, to you. You, you, you. Cheers, Carla. Thank you very cheers. much. Cheers, Carla. Take Good care. Day. Good luck. Gareth, uh, coming back to you, I mean, such a, a, a multi-club and varied uh, career. I mean, one person that you played for uh, is somebody that I know very, very well. Um, and uh, he, lives, he lives not far from me as well. Uh, you, you, you'll always have an interesting time as a player, probably, playing for Gary Megson. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as you did at Nottingham Forest. Um, that was 2004, 05. And you, you, you were made captain by Gary. No? Yeah. 
talk about that part of it first. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I mean, it was a um, difficult period. I mean, I when I was at Forest, I, I played a little bit similar to kind of Sheffield United, really, the amount of managers <laughs> that came in and took over. So I think when I signed at Forest, I signed under Paul Hart. Um, then we had Joe Kinnear and Mick Harford took temporary charge when Joe finished. Um, and then and then Gary came in. Um, so, you know, was, there was a lot of transition going on at the club. There was a lot of player sales. I think, you know, at that period when Gary came in, we lost Andy Reid and, and uh, Michael Dawson to Tottenham. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of changes, a lot going on. Similar again, a team in the championship, a big club in the championship who were looking to break into the top flight. Investment was made. Team wasn't, you know, just missed out, wasn't successful. Um, and, then, and in our case at Forest, we, we dropped down to League One, which was, uh, you know, a, a big, big thing. And there's been some big clubs that that's happened to. So, yeah, it was a difficult, difficult job for Gary. And, um, you know, but you could see that his intentions were there in terms of the way he wanted to run things, the way he wanted the team to play. Um, and yeah, it was great that he made me captain, you know, I mean, I had conversations with him early on initially and um, he spoke about the demands and what he wanted from the team and what he wanted from me personally. So yeah, it was, uh, like I say, it was, a, it was an interesting period. It was great to be the captain, but obviously it was a, it was a tough, tough period for the team as well. Yeah, and this is where Wikipedia, our old friend, comes in and possibly doesn't get it right. He says that... Uh, Gary Megson also stripped you of the captaincy. Is, is, is that correct? Is it or you're nodding? Yeah, yeah. It, it makes it sound really bad, stripped. I think at that point, um, I'd fallen. I had, a, I had some injuries. I was probably let's come towards the twilight of my career a little bit. I think I was 33 at that period. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd done a job for the team. He had me playing as a sweeper in, in, in behind the back four. Uh, so we're playing, you know, like the back five and then there were games when I was back up front and then we'd go and score and get back to the back and defend. So it was a tough ask. And um, yeah, I was out of the team at that period and wasn't playing. So obviously the, the captaincy had to be taken by someone else. And, um, you know, I think my contract was coming to an end as well. Um, but yeah, to be fair, it was all very amicable with with Gary. There wasn't any kind of malice behind it. Um and, you know, at the end of that season, I, I moved on. Yeah. Um, another character that you, you played for, and I know that you particularly enjoyed your time, uh, playing for Ronnie Moore at uh, Chamley. Yeah. Somebody else that I know very well. Yeah. Yeah, Ronnie, good character. You know, again, we, he was kind of, uh, it was a bit like Dad's Army when, we went, when I went to Tram Mills, kind of 33. Um, but he obviously saw the value a bit like Stan Turner and Burnley, where he, he really valued like the experienced players. You know, we had some players, but he really invested in uh, in the experienced players and, and got a lot of them around. Him. Um, but yeah, good times. You know, Ronnie's a good guy and um, played with his lad Ian as well um, on a couple of occasions at Burnley and at Tranmere. So yeah, it was uh, it was a good club, really good club, Tranmere. Who are the managers? Just looking back, and you've obviously played for many that you, you particularly try to take things from in, in what you do now? Um, I think you take bits from each and every one of them. Um, you know, and sometimes it might not always be something that you'll use, but something that you're, you would have been aware of that situation and maybe not use or handle it in a different way. Um, it's interesting, really, because you do get kind of a lot of um, similarities. You get a lot of old school kind of mentality and I think the game's changed a lot now in terms of that connection with players. I think previously it would be very much kind of standoffish, not a hell of a lot of communication between coach and, and player. Um, and, I, and I think the way the world's changed and, and the way the game's going especially is that's, that's changing a lot. That interaction is, is having to change naturally because, you know, I think we'll all agree that communication makes the world go around and, there's nothing worse for a player who doesn't really know their role or responsibility and what the coach demands of them. So I think it's uh, it's changed a lot. Yeah, is it is it less dictatorial then, Gareth, in terms of your role as manager or, or head coach? Whereby, I mean, you played for some very strong uh, characters who would who wanted it done in many cases their way or no way. Uh, do you think that that part of the game is is changing? Yeah, I think it's changed a lot. I think if you look 
if you speak to all of the probably players that you have, former players that you have on your show, especially Chris. I mean, me and Chris came through the same system at Southampton. Um, the youth team coach there was Dave Merrington, who I look back on as being a huge influence in my my career. Um, not necessarily in terms of any kind of tactical mouse or technical bits that he gave me. It was more just about respect and never giving in, you know, but it was tough, very, very tough. And, you know, a lot of players came through that system. And I think uh, regardless of who you came up with or worked with after that, you were never going to get anyone that was worse than Dave in that respect. So it was kind of, um, but those, type, the, those, those days have changed a lot now, you know, the, some of the, some of the ways you obviously speak to players, it has to be about how are you going to gain the best from this person? And, um, you know, each person is different. You know, there might be some similarities, but I think it's really key to get to know someone first before you can start to unlock their potential. Yeah. What's the environment in a women's dressing room and how does it differ from a male dressing room, would you say? I try to stay out of it, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, as much as possible, I tried to stay out of it, so I couldn't tell you. But th no, there was a, there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of obviously, um, you know, there's a everyone has their kind of um, their their way of being and their way of one of what they want to project. And you know, I think um, like we were saying previously, that you know, strong fist is not one that really works for young players or, or young, whether that's male or female. So I think it's just, like I said to you, it's, um, there's a lot of similarities. The enthusiasm and the effort shown by the girls is, is something that has really blown me away. You know, I think they're very coachable. I think they really want to do well um, and they really want to be successful. And they're really serious about this as well, which is, which is what you want. So I think it's just a case of um, harnessing that you know, establishing those relationships, making sure they understand what, you know, they what you expect from them um, and, and enjoying the success, hopefully, that that brings. Does the old-fashioned rollicking, the Alex Ferguson hairdryer, no longer work or is it something that you can selectively use still for, for effect? I think nowadays you kind of, um, you take time out whether that's at half time, whether that's after the game. I don't tend to say a hell of a lot after the game because um, I think you can be quite emotional. So, you know, we might have a quick recess, but then usually it takes place on the on the Monday or the, the day after the game, um, just where emotions can kind of settle down. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure most coaches will tell you that sometimes when you feel you've been bad, you're actually not as bad as what you thought. And sometimes when you think you've been good, you're actually not as good as... So I think it's just remaining calm and taking a... Uh, a perspective on it and giving yourself that time to, to assess the situation really. Um, so I, I try not to use that. And to be honest, every player that you talk to about that Alex Ferguson one, it was very rare. I think that he did that, you know, when you hear from people who played for him, he was actually very rare that he had to usually use it. So um, yeah, society's changed quite a bit, to be honest. I'm not saying for the better or for, for the worse, but it's certainly changed. Yeah. Chris Wilder, your old mate, uh, he always tells me he can bark with the best of them. He uses that word bark. Uh, yeah. He doesn't do it very often, but when he does, I think people feel not just barked at, but quite bitten. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really yeah exactly. Yeah. But that's it. That's it. You know, but he doesn't, he doesn't do it very often. Uh, but when he, when he does, it's very much for effect. Well, as we wind up, I mean, you've played for some great clubs, but you, you've played for some clubs that are still, uh, particularly in the case of Nottingham Forest, uh, you know, are still trying to fulfil that potential. And when you were down there, you must have been so aware of how desperate the club was to, you know, having had the Brian Clough days, and they're still as distant from it as ever, sadly. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I think probably because I'm in the environment myself now and, and, and working as a, as a manager. Yeah. I just think anywhere where you've seen success is usually where the coach has been given a sustainable amount of time to be successful. Yeah. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, about the highs and the lows of opinions and, and results, I think 
you know, looking at Forest last season, they look like destined for the playoffs. They look so good under Lamucci. Um, and, you know, before you know it, they don't make the playoffs and he's out of a job. And it's a, it's a difficult one because, as you know, owners and chairman are under increasing pressure and there'll be a lot of outside noise. But um, I'm, I'm pretty adamant that anywhere where you've seen a coach or an organisation where they've been successful is where they've had time and a plan. I think the plan is obviously important, but time is the, is the key, really. Yeah, in a week in which we've seen Gary Monk uh, lose his job at, uh, at Sheffield Wednesday, trying to turn the club around over a period. Mm. But as he's acknowledged more than once, you kind of have to do it and get results at the same time. As you, you yeah. use the word, results are king. Um, yeah, yeah, they are. And like I say, you know, you're asking for time, but in that time, if you're not producing results, then there's always going to be that element of pressure. It never changes. Um, you know, sometimes you just need to be working, like I say, with an organisation. And, you know, I think I'm fortunate that I'm at a club like Manchester City, where if you look to our men's uh, first team or even our, our women's, you know, Nick Cushing was in the job for six years previous to me taking the role. Um, first team manager Pep has been in the role for, you know, this is going into his third or fourth season. Previously, Pellegrini, Mancini, you know, so when you look at that, I think for us, you know, for a certain period, it gives you an opportunity to, to show what you can do. And usually when that happens, there will be elements of successor. Words of great common sense to close. I must say, by the way, before we do go, uh, that background is far too professional for this show, by the way. You've let the standards think- down dramatically or pushed them up dramatically. I know. I was talking with Carla before and straight away I had to apologise. I don't know. It's been on, obviously, from the previous press that I had to do with the FA Cup and I can't get it off. So but people are like, yeah, I bet you can't get it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very good. And a first for this show, I've got to say. I'm just worried about my background. Now, I've got a Pete McKee. Uh, Pete McKee, the celebrated artist, had uh, done me a little drawing there and uh, Brilliant. he's on the wall. Right. Many thanks to Carl Ward and many thanks to Gareth Taylor. It's been fascinating chatting to you. Very best of luck for the rest of the season and many thanks for joining us. And thank you for watching. We'll be back with another show very soon. See you then. Bye-bye.